everything's fallen apart and the business has failed and and that was my experience i wouldn't be here talking about spirituality and waking up if i didn't go through a shit ton of pain in business around business success, proving myself etc and that's actually what i'd love to dive into next with you bro yeah because that's one it. of the things that i resonate with you on around your journey and your approach to life and that is that you were a really driven success driven man who built up a lot of success in business and then and now you live differently to that so uh i'd love to hear about who were you before when you were attached to business success and validation from that and then what have you learned up until this point that shifted the way that you approach life yeah, thanks, man. Uh, I mean, we have very similar stories in a way and even timing, I think, our ages when we were like in the midst of our journeys and when, when we fucking like exploded our businesses, same sort of thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I definitely resonate with you a lot around all of it. Uh, so for, for those who don't know me, I uh, at 27, I had multiple businesses turning over, you know, a, a few million dollars a year. Um, in the real estate industry i also still own an outsourcing company in the philippines where we provide virtual assistance to businesses all around the world um sold my agencies in 2021 and uh yeah i mean if i look at that time of my life the entire i always used to get asked like how do you do it how did you make have become so successful so young like weren't you afraid how did you make so much money and the, the truest answer that I'm aware of right now is like, I had to, to survive, <laughs> you know, like yeah, my, my brain was telling me at that point in time that if I didn't do that, I wasn't worthy. I was a piece of shit. And, um, you know, and so I did it. I, I, I it was like at any moment where there was doubt or fear, it was overridden by this need to survive. And, um, uh, almost in the, in the purest sense of the word, it's like motivating my sense, myself unconsciously through suffering. Um, and I also just want to add that that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it. I actually really enjoyed it at the time. A lot of it I, I enjoyed. It's just that, you know, um, after a few years of it, it was like playing the same record over and over again. Um, even your favorite song is going to you know, you're going to get sick of it at some point. And I think mm. that's what happened for me. Uh, you know, everything was really good until it wasn't. And it took, you know, it took me actually going through a period where I just opened my first real estate business. I just opened my outsourcing agency. I broke up with my girlfriend who I cheated on a lot. She found out, you know, six months later and like I had to face the reality of that, that she, called me a monster and I felt like a monster inside. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I went from earning a shit ton of money as a sales consultant in real estate, like half a million dollars a year cash in my bank type thing to making a lot of money in revenue as, as a business owner and having very little cash and profit straight away. And mm -hmm. so I went through this period of like not having money in the same way that I had before. Actually, seven, eight months into opening my first business, I was living off $25 a week for food because I would Whoa. go and like batch cook up fried rice with chicken, you know, the big bulk chicken packs at Woolies and big bags of fried ri of rice just to, just to get by. And I also discovered intermittent fasting then because I could save money not eating. Um, and yeah, man, it was a difficult time, but that was the moment where I was like, why am I doing all of this? What's the point if I'm not happy? You know, like I, I don't have a girlfriend anymore. I don't really have any friends besides like one person. Uh, I don't really talk to anyone in my family. You know, it was just, it was clear to me that mm -hmm. I, even though people were applauding me on the outside, I just wasn't yeah. happy. I didn't feel super alive. And so that's when I started asking questions like, well, what, if this isn't it, what is it? What's the point of all of living if I'm not, you know, living what I, how I want to live and how do I even want to live, you know? Um, mm. And I didn't, I wasn't asking that question in a sense of suicidal, suicidally. It was just like, 
what, what's the point of this, you know? Mm. Um, and so fast forward to today after, you know, going through so much coaching, plant medicine, you know, all of that, um, all of that stuff, I think I can look at it now and see that in the past, I perceived business as um, a necessity to another necessity, which was money. And mm -hmm. I needed to consistently focus on having money because it determined my worth, determined how I felt safe and, you know, determined that I would have choice and freedom in my life and more opportunity. And so the focus was always on the transactional side of, of money and, and life. You know, if I invest X dollars here, I'll get X return. If I, you know, put this time in here, I'll get X return. And that will mean that I'll, I'll then be free. I'll then be happier. Now, um, I am privileged enough that I have reached a point where, you know, I, generally can get by without working my business my other business is you know very successful um, and I have a general manager running that company and uh, my experience of life now is what does my soul desire how does my soul most desire to express itself in this moment and and you know in the in the at the moment and um, a part of that for me is sharing value with others in the form of the podcast that I've just spoken about in the form of the, um, retreats that I run, uh, in the form of, you know, music, um, soon I'll be sharing music more publicly recording that sort of stuff. And I just recognize that money is a consequence of, uh, of attention. Money is, a uh, money, money is really the flow of attention. And, and energy from others. And so uh, if I give people value and they like that value, then there will be money flowing my way. And I mm. create opportunities for myself to be open to that money. People pay to come to my retreats. Um, you know, like the, I coach people, like all of these sorts of things. So I mm. think Ryan, what I'm trying to say is I'm operating far more from a space of trust now and I want to acknowledge that it's easier for me to operate from that space because I already have some money. I'm not the richest guy in the world by any means. And I'm not, I wouldn't even consider myself super, super rich financially, but I have enough that like my base level needs are taken care of and I have access to time, etc. So I'm trusting that, uh, through, the natural, my natural desire to want to share and help others, that money will keep flowing my way. And, uh, um, and everything has to be an extension of being in alignment with my soul's expression. So I'll no longer invest in things where it actually doesn't align with my soul. And I can see mm -hmm. that every time I've lost money in the past, the underlying fundamental agreement for me to get a return on that money has not been in alignment with my soul. And so of mm. course it's, it's fucked up or it's failed or the money hasn't lasted. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? It does make sense, man.